Hey guys, RC here, back with Season 4, Episode 1, Draft Day Sports Pro Football 20 with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, yeah, we're at the regular season, and you're probably going, hey, what happened to the draft? Man, you missed a great draft, let me tell you. I did a whole recording, it probably lasted 45 minutes, it was epic, probably the best recording I've ever done. And I went to turn off the recording and realized I hadn't hit start record. So you missed the greatness of my oratorial skills. And for that, I sincerely apologize. So anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to just play some catch up. I've played the first two preseason games. Uh, we have signed some players. We did make a splash in free agency. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. So here's the draft. Uh, yeah, Christopher Nielsen went number one overall, a guard out of Kentucky to the Broncos. 9.9 kabillion dollars per year. That dude better be really freaking good, you know? And he is. He is good. But a guard. Number one overall. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Let's get into our players. So we drafted number 25. Uh, the first player we took was defensive tackle Gary Goodman out of LSU. I took him strictly because he went to LSU. Didn't care what he looked like. Um, I just went for the highest. No, that's not true. I did not. Uh, actually, he was a unanimous selection by all three of my coaches. So we got him. Uh, he's flagged as a nose tackle, so he's better in a 3-4, but he can play the 4-3 inside. Uh, for We had pulled up, uh, make sure I'm actually recording today, and make sure my mic is on, and it is good. Yay, don't want to record a second time. So what I did for this draft is I actually took a lot of time to evaluate several players. Uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the scouting, I just auto-assign points. Um, but I actually, when I was, when I was going into draft, I actually went in, I looked at their, you don't have the actual ratings, but you get, you get a grade form. And then there's actually a second, um, tab in there. And I'll have to show that to you next season, but it's a, uh, it's basically an evaluation. So for like strength, it would say average, unique, exceptional, and they would get a, a word description. And that would kind of give you, so when I was looking at this guy, what I did is last season in the first episode, you and I went through all the ratings that were considered important by some guy, by some other guys that play the game. Some of you said that was very helpful. I wanted to go in and use that this year and dive a little deeper and see if that helped me out at all. So if we look at the defensive tackle, and again, when I look over here, I'm looking at my other monitor, which is not on camera, but that's where I have some other stuff pulled up that I can refer to. So defensive tackle, very strong with high tackling. Well, he is very strong. Tackling is a little lax, but again, what I think I know, I'm assuming... And you know what happens when you assume, but I am assuming things like this will go up with training and experience over time. So no, he may not be the greatest tackler today, but he could be in the sixties in a couple of seasons, right? So he looked good. He had some good ratings. I liked some of his stuff. The strength was there. So we drafted him number one. Uh, he is under a uh, four-year deal, $255,000. Significantly cheaper than the $9.6 million that the number one draft pick got, right? But uh, that is what it is. All right, moving down into the second round, pick number 25. Uh, Derek Knowlton was not a unanimous suggestion, but he was two out of the three coaches. It was another receiver. That was the other coach's option. I did look at a couple of other positions here, but we went ahead and signed Derek. So he signs a four-year deal, $300,000 uh, as a wide receiver. And if we look at wide receivers, uh, if they're going to be number one, they have to have speed. Well, 
he's got yeah, above average speed, but not exceptional speed. That's not why I drafted him. I have a number one receiver in Amari Cooper. So looking for number twos or the slot guy. And again, I'm just checking out the, the language over here. So I'm not ignoring you. I apologize. But you want speed, but height and hands. So hands for your possession receiver, hands for your slot receiver. We did scout him evidently because we got a flag and he is a possession receiver. So this is a guy you could put in the number two or the slot move the chains on first down and sure enough if we look at hands he actually has the best hands on the team of all the receivers i think he's tied with cooper honestly uh so he's going to be a great number two or possession receiver and right now in our depth chart he's number three so he'll play uh, the third wide receiver slot position and a backup uh to both of the uh, top guys so i think he was a pretty good get we move down to the third round. Uh, we picked up uh, Kelvin Lewis. Now, they were wanting us to go with a quarterback here. We ended up getting the quarter, uh, a different quarterback later. Actually, it might be the same one. But this guy jumped up, and I said, you know, if we look at him, I like adding to my line. I know some of my guys on my line are getting older, so we want to keep building knowing it's going to probably take a couple of years for this guy to round into shape so if we look at guards they like uh strength and run blocking okay well he's very strong and he actually is above average in both his blocking so i thought he was a good get out of a m in the third round and we signed him to a four-year two hundred and fifty five thousand dollar deal so i think he was a good get uh, moving into the fourth round, uh, we signed Gary Ruiz. Now, I need it. At, when we got the email at the beginning of the offseason, it said we had a need at guard. We just addressed. We had a need at linebacker. And we had a need at cornerback. So, at this point, I saw Gary Ruiz at corner. Fourth round pick out of Georgia Tech. He does have some off the field issues. So honestly, he fits perfectly in with the Cowboys, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't like drafting guys. I honestly didn't even notice that. But what I, I was looking at his rating. So if we look at corner, uh, basically speed and a little agility, maybe. Speed, excellent. In fact, it said uh, exceptional was, I think, the word for his speed and agility he's got a little bit so very good he signs a one-year deal right um actually i'm gonna go ahead and see can we offer him a contract um because i would like to re-sign him long term uh, moving down to the fifth round, uh, Joseph Reuter. Now, this is not the guy they wanted me to draft. The guy they wanted me to draft was out of Baylor. Baylor. So this guy's a game manager. And when I was looking at the guy they were wanting me to draft in the third round, they, they had that same quarterback, third round and fourth round. I went away from their suggestion and drafted the two guys we just looked at. When we came back for this round, they were off quarterback and they were on to something else. I started looking around and I went, hmm, we do need a quarterback backup because we lost Kevin Sharp last year. I'd like to draft him in the fifth round at the latest because I wanted somebody with more than a two-year deal. I'm not sure why the last guy only got a, a one-year deal, but he did. So when we look at we look at accuracy, very good. He's actually tied with Dak Prescott for accuracy already. Um, his intelligence is very high, second on the team. Better than Cooper Rush behind Dak Prescott, who's like a 91, right? An arm, we said, wasn't that important. So signed him, two-year deal, $300,000. Uh, 
There we go. Sixth round, what we had a major need for was special teams. So I had gone after special teams guys in free agency, did not fare well. Uh, but we did sign a punter, Clarence Fine, and he signs a one-year $300,000 deal, 79 kicking distance. If he looks like he's kicking well, I'll go ahead and try to extend him, but he is under a one-year $300,000 deal. Accuracy's not killer important because we don't really have coffin corner punters anymore. Uh, and then in the seventh round, knowing I needed a kicker, uh, kicking accuracy is lacking distance. Um, I was going after another kicker in free agency that would handle the accuracy part. He had the distance, and I said maybe he'll develop some accuracy over a couple of years, assuming we re-sign him, but that is our kicker. So that's the draft. And then if we go into, let's see, da, da, da. transactions. Do we have transactions? We do have transactions, but I cannot sort these by team, which kind of sucks. Statistics, staff, roster. Uh, Staff-wise, uh, we did extend. Uh, we offered, uh, we re-signed our offensive coordinator to a three-year deal and a five-year deal for our defensive coordinator. So that's good. Um, historical stats. Well... Team news. There we go. Team news. All right, so this is good. All right, so we signed Bradley Chubb, a linebacker, to a three-year deal. Uh, he was looking in the three-and-a-half-plus range. We got him at 2.4. Uh, we got him in the fourth round. We had put an offer on him in week three uh, for below his – asking price because nobody else was after him and i needed a linebacker remember uh linebacker what does it say uh what does it say best linebacker should be speed and tackling strong side is good tackler and strength weak side is your best one left available so strength tackling speed all very good we got him at a good price so he is going to be a starter for us for sure uh, then we came in and, uh, oh, Chris Jones retired. Uh, he's our, oh, that's why we didn't have a punter. I didn't realize he retired. He was only 33. What's your deal? Oh, you could have punted for like four more years, dude. So that's why I needed a punter. I didn't even catch that. Uh, then we needed a guard. So I went after, uh, of course, we signed a guard, but I signed Patrick Koch uh, from Central Michigan. Uh, he signs a deal. Guard is strength and blocking so he's an average blocker and he's got strength so he'll fit into the rotation there i also needed a cornerback those were the three need positions right so this guy popped up uh 25 year old out of virginia tech and uh speed 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 and a little bit of agility which he actually has a good bit and uh yeah so I like him. We got him relatively cheap, four years for just under 1.6. Uh, who did he? Stats. Played for the Bears. Started nine games and then rode the bench. Did not play at all. Became a free agent, and he will start for us. He will be an opening day starter. And then that was he, for some reason, and this is just a heads up for you guys, so he was the first player I made an offer to week one of free agency. We went through the weeks. We got to the draft, which is like after week five or six came back. He didn't appear on my list of bids. So evidently all bids get wiped out after the draft. I don't know if they all get wiped out. Mine did. I had two bids outstanding on the corner and a kicker. Both of them got wiped out. I went in, I put new bids, 
And uh, I did lose another guard that I had uh, offered before Koch. And then uh, the kicker signed some with, with Pittsburgh, I think. So week 10, which was the la going into the last week, uh, I went in. I just kind of was looking for anybody that stood out, anybody that looked like they might have some upside. Came across Eric Doyle, 6'1 receiver out of Iowa. Now, the reason I found this guy is at the beginning of the offseason, you get an email from each one of your coaches and from yourself as the GM, right? And it gives you the players to look at. So I made a note of that. Actually, when on the initial recording, that didn't record. I took screenshots and, uh, you know, I took screenshots of those so I could refer to them real quick. And out of all the you know, there, there was like one one that had four players, one that had three, and then the other two had one. So I think your GM has four, your head coach has three, and your offensive and defensive coordinator have one that they suggest. Well, he was the only one that was on the list. So I looked at him. He's got very good speed. He's got okay hands. So I said, well, let's go ahead and draft him as a as a you know another receiver depth, right? So that's what we signed him for. Uh, so that was our free agent class. Uh, if we go into the season, uh, week one, we won 38-7. We went with all of our starters. Uh, Jose Harris, 32-yard pick six. Don Vasquez uh, gets the extra point. Zeke with a 13-yard run. Vasquez adds a 36-yard field goal. Prescott runs it in. Pollard runs one in, and then Reuter comes off the bench and hits tight end Blake Jarwin for 21 yards, and we win going away. Prescott goes 12 of 24. Reuter goes 3 of 4 with a touchdown. Very nice rating. Uh, no, we're not going to start him over Prescott. Not yet. Uh, Elliott, 88 yards, 6.8 yards of carry, uh, three rushing touchdowns. Oliphant, our number one tight end selection a couple years ago. Uh, five catches, Ship, Cooper. Uh, you notice our new guy was not on the list. Vasquez goes five of five on extra points, one of one on the field goals. Seven punts, 45 yards. I want to remember that because if he looked that good in the second game, may toss him a contract extension. Uh, and Denmark, special teams, uh, one return for 25 yards, two punt returns for negative four. Uh, he had six tackles, uh, no pass defenses, uh, so nothing going on there. Going to week two, uh, we beat Tennessee 24 to 10. The only change I made was uh, Reuter coming in to start. So Vasquez hits a field goal. Uh, Pollard, an 18-yard run. Reuter hits Cooper for 59 yards, and Elliott with a 9-yard run. Reuter goes 15 of 26, 192 yards. One touchdown, not a bad rating at 93, and uh, pretty good production out of the backfield. Over four yards of carry, a couple of touchdowns. Uh, Knowlton got his first two catches, two for 21 uh, Vasquez, three for three, one for one, and Fine added 48.6 average. So you know what? I am going to offer you, let's offer you a four-year deal. Like that. And Vasquez, you're actually looking good. You're under a one-year deal. I'm going to offer you three at 370. That's still affordable. Hopefully you guys sign those and we will close that. So if we go in and jump into the depth charts now, uh, what I did in training is I brought it up to 24 points instead of 25 like I've done in past seasons. I went up one in physical, one in up one in positional and went with that. I still had a, quite a few guys that were fatigued, but only four. Nobody got hurt, and then I dropped those down, and we're at 22, which seems to be a pretty good uh, filter at that point. Um, if we go into roster again, we're over, so let's go to roster management, uh, auto adjust. All right, so Schultz, Goodwin, 
Oh, Ruiz. They moved him over. Really? I don't think I like that. I'm going to move him to active. So let's go. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Positional counts. I'm thinking a guard. I'm thinking a guard is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't want two. Where are my guards? There they are. All right, so guards is all about strength. All right, I'm going to move him to practice. All right, so there is that. Let's jump into our depth chart now. All right, we're going to let the offensive coordinator make the call here. All right, so Reuters number two. We're going to go with Prescott, Elliott, Trinidad. Uh, Cooper, Ship, Knowlton will be our three receiver set. Knowlton will be our primary backup receiver. Oliphant, Jarwin uh, are our tight ends. Smith, Martin, Flores over Frederick. Is that who I want there? I don't know. Let's save that and let's come back to that. Flores and Frederick. Center. Strength. Yeah, and he's he's a better pat. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Um, I might try to trade Frederick then, right? Um... Travis Frederick, save. All right, so we will uh, put him on the trade block. I could even put Cooper Rush. Well, he's he's pretty affordable. Uh, Tony Pollard. I'm gonna put him on the trade block too, just to see if I get any offers. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not worried about it. Uh, so let's go back to depth chart. We already did the offense, so we will do the defense. We'll let our defensive co coordinator uh, handle that. And special teams, we'll let the head coach do that one. And save. All right, so of course we have uh, Denmark at kick returner and punt returner. Vasquez and Fine, our new, uh, new players there. Rooters are back up. Knowlton's our backup and number three receiver. And Goodman will be our starting defensive tackle. So that's our number one overall pick. Chubb will slot in as our number one linebacker. He was a free agent signing. And uh, see, that's why I didn't want, want Ruiz on the practice squad because he's actually my number two corner. So, yeah, I don't like that. Didn't like that decision. And Denmark will be our number two corner behind Brown. Ruiz will back both of them up. And, uh, yeah, so that's the, the new guys, right? And we'll get into the season. So where are we at on time? Yeah, we're 24 minutes in, so I think that's a good cutting place. If there's anything I didn't hit in this re-recording of the uh, preseason, let me know. I'll go back and try to show it to you uh, in the next episode or two, uh, depending on when I actually record it, because I'm probably going to record the next episode right now when I, as soon as I finish. But uh, yeah, so when you see this, if there's something that you didn't see that you'd like to see, let me know, and I'll try to go back and show that to you or find it or talk about it at least. Guys, thanks for watching. Sorry I screwed up the initial recording because I swear it was epic. Uh, and you got left with this second rate cheesy video instead. I apologize. Uh, but hey, we will see you guys uh, next episode with the uh, first, uh, what, six weeks of the season. Yep, six weeks of the season. 
Uh, hopefully we can get back to the playoffs. We are picked as the runner up. So we may be playing for a wild card this year. Uh, they did have a couple of trades. So again, I, you know, I don't think trades happen a ton in the NFL. They just don't. So, but I'm, I'm not going to be one that's going to really try to instigate trades, but I will put guys on the trade block sometimes and ow, and uh, see if anything happens with that. So uh, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, comment away below. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking. And uh, we'll talk to you next episode. Go Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? See ya. Bye.